I'm Grace and I'm reporting for On The Map Off The Radar. This week we're going to be talking a bit about the conflict in South Sudan. Um, and you might have heard about South Sudan, it's the newest country in the world, independence from um, Sudan was achieved in 2011. Um, you might have heard about the conflict in Darfur, um, which you know has been described as a genocide by many people. And you might also have heard that the president of Sudan, Omar al-Bashir, has been indicted by the International Criminal Court. Um, but you might not really know the details of the conflict that's going on at the moment. Um, since South Sudan became independent in 2011, uh, in 2013 a really um, intractable civil war broke out between um, two factions within the ruling party. Um, and this is portrayed by the media as kind of atomistic tribal fighting, um, which is just, you know, typically African. And prior to that, the secessionist civil war was actually portrayed as a kind of a liberation war against the evil colonialism of the Islamic North. Whereas actually, neither of these narratives really capture the complexity of the situation. So I'm going to try and give you a brief overview about, um, you know, some of the uh, things that have been going on that aren't really covered by the media. Um, so firstly, we have um, the pre-colonial period. So uh, Sudan and South Sudan were kind of ruled over by a Turco-Egyptian condominium. Um, for a while, then the Mahdists defeated them and came to power, and then the Anglo-Egyptian condominium came to power. And this was essentially the period of British colonialism. And throughout these periods, uh, the South had been um, really marginalised, it hadn't been developed at all. And the British actually actively underdeveloped it. They didn't let anyone leave the South, they didn't let um, anyone from the North enter the South, and they basically wanted to protect this kind of African, pagan, um, very backward place and just put a load of missionaries in there and try and essentially convert them all to Christianity. Um, so when independence came, uh, the South had obviously you know, been um, made Christian and had its own culture, which was very separate from that of the North. And there were a lot of Southern leaders that were really set on um, ensuring that they weren't made um, independent along with Sudan as one state because they really feared um, Islamic dominance from the North. Um, and this is essentially what happened because Britain didn't want Egypt to kind of get control over Sudan, they made the whole country independent as one. Um, and, you know, the leaders uh, of Sudan in Khartoum did institute a lot of very repressive um, Islamicizing policies that tried to repress a lot of southern identities. Um, so various rebellions broke out during this period, um, and by kind of the early 2000s, this had killed millions of people and displaced many, many more. And this was essentially portrayed in the media, as I said, as the SPLA fighting a liberation war against an evil regime in Khartoum. Um, but actually, the SPLA was a pretty autocratic organisation itself. It was led by John Garang, um, and he really tried to crush any internal dissent within that organisation. He also killed a lot of civilians in the South, um, and really was seen as someone who promoted the other members of his tribe against um, the kind of the other tribal groups in the South. And the South is di uh, quite divided now uh, along tribal lines because of this legacy, because mm -hmm. the SPLA has effectively taken over and has only given power to a certain specific group. Um, and this led to a lot of factionalism within the organisation. So there have been many, many splits since it's, it was created and various different tribal groups have kind of come off from this. Um, and I, you know, when I use the word tribal, what I mean here is that essentially uh, leaders who belong to a certain tribe have tried to mobilise their ethnic constituencies to fight one another so that they themselves can take power. So when we hear about this tribal war, it's not that there are these people on the ground who you know, are inevitably going to hate one another, it's that they've actually been manipulated by leaders and they've actually been really underdeveloped by generations of um, essentially colonial rule, um, which has led them to kind of conceive of their interests as completely, you know, mutually exclusive with both those of the North and of other ethnic groups within the South. Um, and with regards to the North, I mean, it's also fighting insurgencies. It's still fighting insurgency in Darfur, the Nuba Mountains, Blue Nile. So this picture really isn't as simple um, as, you know, we might think. I'm going to put some links in the description below to some articles which will explain the situation a bit further. But I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into maybe some of the aspects of the South Sudanese conflict that you might not see in the mainstream media. Thank you, I'm Grace, reporting for On The Map Off The Radar.